G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach beginners how to paint beautiful, eye-catching, wonderful paintings in acrylic. I wanna get the size up there for you and I'll also get some colors going up the screen so you can jot them down and use the same colors I'm using. But if you don't have the same colors, just use what you got, something similar. That will work fine, okay? So get on over here and let's get right into it. Now I've got my canvas laid sideways, which is landscape format, and our horizon line is pretty much in the center. Now some people might say, well, you shouldn't really have it in dead center, but depending where you're looking at this image, this is the water, that's the sky. We're pretty much like right on the water. Let's say our eye level is right on the water here. So we're gonna be pretty much having our horizon in the middle. If you're up high, the horizon will be way down here. If you're way down low, the horizon will be higher up. Now I wanna start with the beautiful, easy, simple sky, but just because it's easy, doesn't mean it is easy. It's easy when you know what to do. So I've got some retarder there, and I'm gonna mix that up with some soft titanium white. Just a soft body, see how soft it is? It's not a thick structured one. And there's my sky area, so I'll just pretty much push it with my putter on a brush, left and right, crisscrossing it into the tooth of the canvas, just getting it everywhere. Now you don't want this too thick, okay? You want it reasonable. Practice how much you feel you're gonna need. Now I'm getting it right everywhere into the tooth of that canvas. Now I'm gonna to come to the tip of this brush and stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman. Look at that. Now I want a blue, cool sky. So I'm going for cerulean blue. Now see here, take note. There is no retarder in the blue sky color, only what I primed the board with. So I wanna pick up the cerulean blue on both sides and me put it on a brush. Message me on Facebook, it links in the description below if you want me to send you this brush and the blending brushes I use for the clouds, which you'll see later on. Now the top of the sky needs to be darker than the bottom, so I'll start at the top right across the canvas, don't muck around. And then I'm gonna start pulling it down to the horizon area. You can see how horizon area there. Go to the tip of the brush now where I can push, crisscross it, get everything so at the end of the day, this is one color. We're not making it all smoky and weird like that. This is gonna be a simple but a realistic looking sky. Now I've come to the tip of the brush and I'm stroking it left and right now. I've got all the blue where I wanted it. Now I'll get the bottom a little bit lighter. So I've simply wiped me put her on a brush and I'm going to grab some of the soft titanium white and I'll put this at the bottom of the sky. Watch what this does. We want the bottom of this sky my nice and white and lighter. I'll pick up a bit more. There we go. Now I'm massaging it in, massaging it in. Now I'm slowly bringing it up. Now I'm coming to the, I've been massaging it in with this part of the brush. Now as I'm coming up, I'm coming to the tip of the brush. See these, all these little things you might not realize someone's doing, but that's what I'm doing to make this happen. Now I'm at the tip of the brush and now I'm just pushing that into the heavier sky color up there until we get a beautiful gradient. Now I wanna show you the best way in acrylic a beginner can learn to paint some clouds. I'm getting my titanium white now. It's a lot thicker than what I use. See, this is a little bit more thicker, but it's not structure, it's just a bit thicker. Structure is really pasty, okay? You don't want it too pasty. Use whatever brush is comfortable for you. Within your practicing, this is how you learn. I find a hog bristle fan brush is good for me to stamp on my cloud footprint. The, the hog bristle fan brush, the bristles are very sturdy and firm. And this is just simply going to stamp on the cloud. So I'll start at the bottom. My horizon line in this is somewhere about there, okay? So that's where I've got to remember. Um, I'll just do something here first. So I'm pushing on whatever. I want the top of it reasonably creative for me cloud. I'm turning the brush around. I'm not worried about what's happening underneath. I'm just worried about the top crisscrossing it, but trying to make this top line cloud formation like. So we can get the, take your time, so you can do this, look. But this is just tinkering around. Okay, I've done that. Put that down. Now, grab yourself 
a blending brush. These are what I use, they're fantastic. And a kitchen cloth. <clears throat> now, I'm using the tip of the brush, the corner of the brush, I'm stamping, getting my movements. Okay, I could see, but look at just there how much paint went on the brush. That's what you've got to wipe off. I've wiped it off. And now I'm going to get this and start using this blending brush to create, wipe it, the movement and the shape and the turmoil of my clouds. Just like this. All the way along the bottom of the sky. The sky, the bottom of this sky is going to be very, very glary because it's a glary day out in the ocean, like I said. Now see, I've, I don't know, hopefully the camera's picking that up. I've sat that down into that blue sky colour. And I want to kind of do this all the way along the bottom of my painting. See how I've sat that down? I haven't just finished it. If anything, I, I bring it out, if anything, in my mind. I'm bringing that out just to create that vibe of cloudness, I suppose. Now we're going to do another one. I've wiped that brush. See how dirty it is? Okay, I've washed it and I've loaded it up with more paint. I probably want something coming here now. So I want to push the white on, coming from off the painting, coming down though. And if anything, I want to come in front of that cloud with this one. So I might have to do it in two stages. Get something up there. If anything, that's my cloud, the top, the top line here. Don't worry about what's underneath. When you learn how to do clouds, you'll get an idea how you can start laying them in yourself. Now I'm gonna do the same again. I'll pull this out, but see how this is sort of mashing into one? I wanna, in my mind, change that vibe up a bit. So I'll quickly get this cloud tapped, shaped and blended the way I want first. I'm just getting the top there done. I have so many videos and a lot of my videos just have cloud tutorials in them everywhere. So check out my video tab below if you're watching on a desktop. And I have over 500 videos there and just have a look. And if you like the sky in one of them, just watch it for the sky subject. There we go. Now everything's still looking flat. We've got to start bringing it to life. That's what clouds are all about, bringing everything to life. So I'm just getting this blended down into that white light colour blue. Now I just noticed I've got a white brush mark there. I might just distort that a bit because that sky is still very wet. There we go. Too easy. Okay, I do want to get something over here a bit. So let's come in front of that. Now I've just off camera added the slightest little bit of yellow in here, cadmium yellow, because I don't want this white to hinder my sun glare. I forgot. So I've just added a little bit of yellow. It's still white, but it's got a yellow vibe going on with it. You might see this cloud looking a little bit more uh, yellowy colour. Lightly in front of that. See how I'm just barely touching that now? Barely touching it. Now I'm going to bring this down to the horizon line. You're painting everything in layers, so you don't have to worry about being delicate with a big brush. I'll spray that up a bit there like that. And now I want to put that cloud in front of there. So we're coming across the top of it and bringing it down. There we go. And we can add this for yumminess as well. Just but this is not too yummified clouds, these ones this low down. Just something to push that first cloud I painted back. Dance it, tap it, find your vibe. Because once we put the water up to this, it's gonna look quite all right. I've run out of paint, so I'll just show you the amount of yellow. There's my cadmium yellow, look, a little bit and just yellow it. There we go, that's plenty. Not all we'll put a bit on this one. I'm just gonna crack a bit in there, up on top. And I want this one a bit more stronger because he's a bigger cloud. That'll do. That will do.
and this middle one. Look at it, looks, looks funny, doesn't it? Let's push that right away and just keep that sharp bit at the top of that cloud. And that's it. We just have some simple but effective acrylic clouds in our sky. Now I want to get the sunlight in the sky. I want it to right about here. Grab yourself a soft brush. I've got a soft filbert. And I want to get the white. The sky's still wet. The sky still needs to be wet for this to happen. And I want to start creating the sun glare in the sky. So over here, I'm just going to push it in. Okay. Get it all off the brush that way and that way. Now if you feel, look at, be smart. Don't just hope your painting's going to work. You've got to make it work. Watch what I do here. See, my brush is still full of paint. That could trip me up later. So I'm going to just simply wipe all that off, okay? Just wipe it off, flap it into the brush so it's a bit more. Now I'm going to create my glare. I'm just going to come out and start creating a glare in that blue sky. You can use your finger. You can use whatever you want. Now wipe your brush because it's building up. I can even use my blending brush. I'm just showing you so many ways. It's all up to you how you think and how you want to use things. Okay, see that? I'm getting, I tapped into the blue and pretty much bought it there. So that's why that happened like that. I'll get my blending brush because it's not quite going the way I want. There we go. So I'm gonna have to get my blending brush and create this glare. So I'll put a bit more on with that filbert brush. Want a nice big glare in the sky. Sit it on there, stamp it on, stamp it on. There we go, make it the size you want. I want it about that size-ish. And then it's gonna glare out from there. Look at it, it looks like a big blob, doesn't it? This is where we get the blending brush, stamp it, and kind of gently pull it out into that blue sky. Get rid of all those brush marks from the middle first, then wipe your brush. And see what I've done here? I'm gonna do that all the way around until it's artistically pleasing to the eye in my sky. And this is how you can get acrylic paints to work like an oil paint. That top, there's a shadow there, but. We've got a beautiful controlled glare in the sky. Careful not to go over the blue and bring the, glue, the blue back into it. And then you just work on that till it's as glary as you want. Okay, now I'm grabbing some more, but see with this yellow bit mixed here? I want some of that now. And now we want to intensify that with the yellowy bit. A bit more on your brush. And if you want, you can even have a glare coming up there. If you don't want the glare, don't worry about it. Grab your blending brush. I'll pull that glare down. See, like that, and up there, pull it up, out the way. And then I'll continue pulling this yellowy white out into our glare. And just keep playing with it till you're happy with it. I want it a little bit stronger in the middle, so I'm just gonna pick up some more now and get it a bit stronger in the middle. There we go. And simply sit that down. And that is how easy you can do quite a reasonable, realistic sky for a beginner with a beautiful, glary sun in the middle. It's a hot, warm, glary day. Okay, that's it. Sky's over, the blending's over. That can dry. You can sit down and have a cup of tea, make yourself some sandwiches or have a custard tart, whatever you feel, because we need to get this dry so we can bring the water up to that sky level now, okay? Now, everything's dry. I want to mask this up. So the top of this mask and tape is the top of my horizon line, which I want to, I'm just getting a visual. So it's about there. I'm, you know, you just move it to where you're happy. So I want it about there, so I'll just reverse it. There we go. Now I've just pushed it on lightly across here and then rub it on at the edges there. Just push it on there. Now I'm grabbing my soft bodied titanium white again, or as I call the craft white, without retarder. This is just to prime up the bottom. 
because I feel if I put my blue colours on here, it's just going to be so dark onto that dry canvas cloth. So I'll get this pushed on a bit more. Now I'm nowhere near the tape. I don't want a white heavy ridge of paint there. So what I'm doing, I'm staying away from my tape. And then when I've got enough paint on my canvas here, I'll start using the brush. See that tape's coming off again, you bugger. I'll start using my brush and then bringing it up to the sky colour there. So it's not heavy, thick, what do you call it, R ridge of paint up there. Left and right, because that's the way the water's laying. I want to wipe my brush and then I want to pick up my turquoise. I've got a uh, phalo turquoise here to be exact, but just any turquoise, a darker vibe, and get this on there all over the water area. Let's get this on there. See that white paint is helping this flow across the canvas. Now I want it darker than that, that's quite light, but I've got it on there, that's what I want. I'm going to wipe my brush, picking up some more, and getting the darker vibe in there, there we go. What you can do as well, some people have seen me do this, is control where you want the darker bits. We're going to add a lot more darker value to this with some phalo blue, I'll show you. But I want that reasonable. There we go. I want to get some of that turquoise now and mix it with some phalo blue. Bit of paint mixing here, so I've got some here. Let's bring this over here. The dark, this is going to be the darker value I want. So we're going to do a bit of paint mixing. Grab that turquoise and some phalo blue and let's make a real darker vibe of that. So I'm just using a little small detail filbert brush here to get this going. Now our paint on the canvas can start to tack up and get a bit sticky. It doesn't have to be wet because it's going to be hard to scrumble this in if it's too wet. Now I'm looking at that, it's going okay, but I feel it's a little bit blue, so I'll put a bit more of that darker turquoise in there. So we're going to get the darker values in there now first. Now I want to show you, because this is a tutorial, I haven't dried my canvas, so let's see how this goes before drying it. Because you want some nice thick, I'll go on here first, nice thick, See like that, it's sitting on there. If I wipe that off my brush, it's not going to scrumble the way I want. See what I mean? So that's why I'm showing you this now. So I'm going to just slightly, I'll just brush it away. See, because that's very wet. I'll just brush it away. Now I'm going to get my hair dryer and just make that rubbery. Now I've given it a slight dry and we want kind of dark bands in here. So I'm going to stick it on, okay, just wherever. Well, let's, let's see if I've tried it enough. I'll wipe the bulk off that brush. I want to grab another brush to scrumble that down with, so I'm going to use my little flat that's been all munted up, and I just want to kind of, there we go, get that sitting down in the water. See the edges? I'll wipe it. It's all about wiping as well. Now see here how it's kind of sudden where the two colours meet, it's a sudden change. You want to distort that suddenness into subtleness. There we go, and I'll just show you why. It's very easy. The top you can probably leave, but mainly the bottom. Now we're going to do that away along the bottom, so just like some big, thick, dark, wavy bands of darkness going into this water here. So I'm going to get rid of the subtleness. I'm going to turn it to subtle, subtleness down the bottom. So we get beautiful motion in our ocean. It's going to look quite doable. Get some out here, nice big. Further up, down the bottom is closest to you. These are big. It's important. This gives you perspective within your painting. I'll get that a bit subtle down the bottom there. See, there's still a little bit wet, if anything. I could probably dry this a little bit more. You need all the darks come right off your painting. Don't be shy. Don't stop at the edge of your painting. Just keep going right off your painting. Because you, in general, I like to start, when I'm doing things like this, 
you got your base colour down, you start with your darks and then you gradually bring your mid-tones and your lighter colours at the very end. Choppy bit there. Get the top of it, I'll wipe that off there. And get the bottom a bit more subtle. Now once you've watched this video a couple of times, you'll know why I'm doing this. I know why I'm doing this, but if it's just your first time watching this video, you're gonna be wondering, well, why is he doing this? But for you to see what's in my mind, you need to watch the video a couple of times. I just gave the canvas a bit more of a dry, because I feel some of this is not sticking out dark enough. I'll wipe that off the brush. <laughs> and we'll get that a bit more subtle. Yeah, see how I've dried it now? I'm, I'm, I'm able to scrumble it into that lighter phalo blue a bit better. Find that um, temperament, that sweet spot, how dry you want it to do this. Okay, As your, if it's your first time doing this kind of procedure, don't just do a painting and try and put it into your painting. Practice it first, it's very important to practice it. I'll just get these a little bit darker again. Now I'm going to pick up my putter on a brush, grabbing just that dark colour, just on one edge of my putter on a brush. Out in the water we need lots, let me go over here first, yeah that'll be okay. We need lots, cross bond it. Cross bonding is like bricks, you know how bricks are cross bonded, they're not in a straight line. And this is just simply all that stuff out there but getting it on a bit quicker and you can come a little bit more heavy with a bit of a drag to it. Let me have a look in the monitor. That's working all right. We're getting those um, come off there like that. See how I'm doing it? I'm controlling. I'll come off there. It's quite easy to do once you know how to do it. I never knew how to paint until I learnt. Um, we all learn. Every day we're learning something. Some out there, come a bit bigger. So you'll get a vibe of what I'm trying to do here in a minute. When I start adding the other colors, you will see. That's, I'm gonna turn my brush around just to scratch some of that out of there, because the other side of this brush has got no paint on it, so I can control what I do here. This is just what I feel would be an easier way to get all this dark vibe out into the water there. This is just a simple way to get a reasonably decent, realistic. The sunlight hitting this water is going to bring it home. That's going to make it the champion. That's going to make it the centerpiece. Now I'm just looking, see how I've got stampy blobs and smeared blobs? I'm just finding those stampy blobs and just kind of sitting them down, making it more pleasing to the eye. That's what I'm doing here. And that's it for our darker added on to the blocked in colour. Okay, back down here, we have our turquoise now. So where is it? That's wet. Here we go. We'll get a bit over here. And I want to grab some of my whites and get a lighter value going over here, a big lighter pile value of that. Okay, I've got it the vibe I want. Now, my brush is full. I wanna get it off the brush, okay? Get as much of it off the brush as possible. And in our water, we wanna find where the light's kind of hitting bits and pieces. So, I didn't want much on my brush. Look, if anything, these are gonna be tips like that, okay? And you can sort of, push them backwards, tip there. And this is gonna simply make bits of highlights within your painting. Don't think about it too much. It's not a realistic painting, but it's gonna give you that, the values and the colors and everything of decent rough looking choppy ocean water with the light hitting it. See my sunlight? I'm not gonna to touch anything there. Um, if anything, I'm gonna radiate out from there just simply radiate out. Get this brush, you can even twist it like that, getting some light hitting the tops of this dark stuff. So I'm barely touching it there. Just 
just swirls. Look, get the brush on, roll it and move it and do that with it. I'll go over here now. You'll be able to transform from this to your level. Everyone's different. And if you feel, like I said, you've done too much, just simply get the other darker colour, whether it's a mid-tone or the darker colour, and sink it back, okay? I do want... See the darks, the big dark bits? I need those ribbons. That one's still too wet. I need those ribbons coming through like that. There's another one here. And another one here. <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to do is just grab the medium colour because I feel I do have some of that maybe a little bit too loud. So I'm just going to grab the medium colour that I had and kind of squash them down where just where you feel it's a bit too much. You'll get a vibe of what I'm doing. Okay, now we've got our white mixed with a little bit of yellow, so it's tainted with the yellow. Now I've got a small flat brush here, and from here I'm just going to wet the end of my brush with some paint. From there, that's my go to point right down there. Okay, can you see that dot? Yes. So that's my go-to point. I want to grab that paint that I just mixed up with the yellow and the white and from here there's the sun so from about here to about here and then it'll vanish to about there somewhere. So what I want to do, let's get that tape there, I want to use the flat brush and just get some lines. Now is that sharp enough? I don't feel it is. I'll work with it for now. It's really intense here, but as we come down, it's going to get a bit more open. But I'll gradually do it as we go, just so you can follow along and get an idea of the vibe. What I'll do is I'll go, I can pretty much come here with the darkness. Where's my line? There it is there. I'll wiggle around. This will be the main thickness and then it's going to gradually open up. Where's my line? And from about here it'll start opening up. Stamp it on. Big solid white bits in there. Stamp it on. You've got windows of water in there popping through it now. Stamp it on. Okay, now we can start glaring this out. I'm now follow some of your your water ripples. I've got some dark coming up here so I want to leave that dark there. And then from about here it's going to start really getting a bit more opened out. I'm combing. See I'm making this that solid bit there. I'm putting a comb's edge on it now and this is just one side of it all. I want this the same over here now. So I'm going to put a comb's edge and where you see, like I said, there's a bit of dark there. Okay, so watch what we do there. I'll get to that first. Let's get to it first. We're controlling the glare right on the water there. You've seen this you've liked it, you want to paint it, and well, I'm showing you today how you can paint it. Get right across the top of that dark there, a bit glistening out there. And then come under that dark, a little bit into it. There we go. Now we're making that comb's edge again. Don't forget that dot I put down there, that's my reference to where I'm going. And this is going to be detailed as well. See here how that looks a bit iffity effity We've got to un-iffity effity that up, so we'll just simply 
I didn't see that until I looked in my monitor. You always see me looking away from my canvas at times. That's me just looking into my camera monitor there just to get a visual of... Because normally when you're painting, it's always good to stop, just get back and look at it. And me looking into my camera monitor is doing that same procedure. Now as we get to the bottom here, I'm going to detail that up a bit later. So about here we have, might have nothing, might have a little bit of just glistening there somewhere. And then maybe just a little bit here. Actually, where's my dagger brush? I think he's gonna do the job. Now, those of you who don't know what a dagger brush is, this one came in a packet. Now, I bought one on its own. It was a nice long one, but I didn't realize it was for watercolors, and it was very flimsy and floppy and soft. No good. Now, see this one here? I can get my lines real sharp where I want and where I want my dots. Over here. I'm just giving it a light dry. I don't need that tape there anymore. I'll pull that off. Just so as we can control the glare where it meets the horizon line also. So grabbing the filbert, uh, the um, dagger brush again and Malcolm, my mouse stick, I want to control our glare so from the horizon line. Where are we? If you could see any blue there, I'm gonna just get rid of it with this. Because I've dried it, I can get a lot of, I don't think I dried it enough though, I was too impatient. Enough glare on here. I've just mixed a little bit of water with it. Not too much though. And I wanna just kind of tidy this up now. Now have a look at the sides of your water. See here, just get um, the lightest value of your turquoise and a, uh, an extension of this color can kind of just sort of radiate. Let's just try a bit here. Very fine, I'm using the dagger brush and a bit on this side as well so continuation of that white but it's this color this is not white but it might look white Get a lot of it off the brush just so I can get some glary bits here. Just like that. Not too many. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. I, I'm feeling like am I doing it justice or am I destroying it? Just a bit of up and down glare there. Okay, before we get too carried away, I want to put my signature on here and I want to use this opportunity to thank my patrons and the members of my YouTube channel who support me every month. It's much appreciated. Check out the links in the description below.
all my art is for sale. You can purchase the blending brush and the putter on a brush I use in this video. Just message me on Facebook. Okay, let's whack a frame on this and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got the glare on the ocean. That's the hero of the painting. The rest is just making up the subject matter. But you can learn from this, you can progress from this, and I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.